he was a very, he was, he was a, funny, he was a very funny guy. What he would do, like good the, impressions, the like Nation of Islam, Obama. Uh, let me be clear, you know, the white race doesn't disappear overnight. <laughs> but if- something kind of surprising happened during a recent episode of Joe Rogan's podcast, where the name Michael Brooks was brought up. Now, Michael, of course, was a highly respected political commentator who suddenly died in July 2020. He's someone that, out of anyone with a more human rights and workers' rights-oriented perspective, I think deserved a much larger platform than he received. He would have been a fantastic guest on Rogan if he had been invited on. But here, um, I'm going to play for you this clip. So Ben Burgess, who was a close friend of his, was a guest on the show. I'll discuss more about this after this clip here. But he brings up his name, and Rogan has some nice things to say. I think like Cornell West, you know, I, I think that's a that's a Christian I have yes. a, immense respect for. Uh, He's, have you ever met him? Uh, no, no, I, I have. Um, he was on uh, like so I, I used to do a segment on the Michael Brooks show, and I think he was on that at least at least once. Maybe I miss a couple that guy. Times. Yeah, he was great. Yeah, he was. He was. He was. Uh, he was one of my my closest friends for the last couple of years before he uh, before he passed. That he was, was a funny just, dude too, man. He was a very, he was, he a, was funny. He was a very funny guy. What he would do like good the, impressions. The like Nation of Islam, Obama, and you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was just a, a really thoughtful, interesting guy who knew a shitload about politics and you know and about socialism. And he was a really good guy to sort of defend these positions of democratic socialism too. Because he, he didn't seem like a bad person, you know, like uh, when and even in critiquing other people mm-hmm. that dis, dis disagreed with him. I felt like he did it for the most part pretty reasonably. Yeah. Well, I think that one thing that he really got and I actually think he helped me to get, you know, since in the, you know, in the year since I met him is that um, like a lot of people who who agree with with his position, with my position, uh, don't think nearly enough about what's going to be appealing to like most ordinary people. So nice little moment there on Joe Rogan's podcast discussing Michael Brooks. I would never have guessed that Rogan was that familiar with Michael's work considering Rogan never had him on the show. I mean, Michael Brooks was highly critical of Sam Harris, Jordan Peterson, Brett Weinstein, all names that were regulars on Rogan's show. And there's some speculation, I'm not sure you know, how accurate this is, but there's some speculation that Rogan never had on either Michael Brooks or Sam Cedar because of their criticisms of those three individuals. If that's the case, that's really ridiculous. But it's so unfortunate that Michael was never invited on. Now, I'm going to get to a clip of, um, of Michael's comedy here since it was brought up by Ben Burgess there, some of his impressions, since I think we all need a bit of a laugh right now. The world is incredibly depressing at the moment, so it's good to have a little reminder of how uh, how much of an incredible person Michael was. I mean, this is somebody who was compassionate, educated, and funny. That's one hell of a combination when we're talking about somebody who whose job it was to educate others. Just an absolutely incredible human being. So I want to play for you um, just uh, a few impressions here. So this is from just a, I'll, I'll link to the larger clip below the video on YouTube, Best of Michael Brooks Impressions, Volume 1 here. So there are more volumes, <laughs> there's more videos, there's, I mean, hours of Michael Brooks doing impressions. But here is a little sampling of that. Uh, let me be clear, you know, the white race doesn't disappear overnight. <laughs> but if you look <laughs> at the, uh, the longer trends, uh, white mortality increasing. Fewer white babies uh, being born. Look, look, look. The the devil isn't thrown back into a cave overnight. <laughs> the arc of history is long, but it bends towards Sharia. A <laughs> couple years ago, more relevant in the real proper founding of right-wing Mandela, we heard a clip of Rick Santorum claim that fighting Obamacare was the moral equivalent of what Mandela was doing in fighting apartheid. And I sat there and I went, Rick is quite right. And ever since then... It's been a character. In Santorum's mind, Mandela comes out and he's like, of all of the injustices in the world, that could remind me of the struggle against apartheid. The delivery of health care <laughs> through a private market mechanism. <laughs> None could face the same level of injustice and tyranny <laughs> that Americans face by having an inconvenient website <laughs> so that they are covered in a catastrophic situation. 
Now, there's another group of people that have arisen around her that respond to her in a cult-like way, and she can do no wrong. And, you know, it's that's like the Bernie or Bust bill. I was just like, well, maybe if you voted for fucking Tulsi Gabbard, we could have a revolution. I love Tulsi Gabbard. Did you see her in that bikini? And she was surfing, and everybody supports fucking corruption except for fucking Tulsi Gabbard. <laughs> so maybe if you weren't smearing fucking Tulsi Gabbard, she could be the fucking president. Oh, my God. I miss those impressions. So... So hilarious. And on the Tulsi point, I just got to share this since, you know, Michael Brooks was out there calling out Tulsi's bullshit long before a lot of people were, you know, while certain dipshits were endorsing Tulsi over Bernie in 2020, Michael Brooks was calling out her crap. And lo and behold, here's Tulsi Gabbard. She actually, I think today is appearing at the conservative political action conference. So she was always full of shit. And people that fell for it, Understand the people that you followed that were, you know, pushing her bullshit back then. Those are frauds. People like Michael Brooks were on the right side of history calling this crap out. So be aware of, you know, where you take your information from. If you're still listening to dipshits that back Tulsi in 2020, maybe it's time to reanalyze who you're listening to. But one last point about um, Rogan's show. So he is having on, you know, the past couple or past few days, he's had on Ben Burgess, a Democratic Socialist. And he's had on Dr. Michael Osterholm, an infectious disease specialist, who he had on at the beginning of the pandemic back in March 2020, just had him on recently again. So it does appear that, at least for now, Rogan is trying to be a little more diverse in his uh, in his guests. So I hope to see, I uh, hope that continues and he continues, um, you know, challenging a lot of the right wing garbage he's been uh, known to spew. But one last thing here, a lot of people may not realize there was a little interaction between Rogan and Michael Brooks back in the day. So <laughs> Rogan, during one of his shows, um, called uh, Michael Brooks, Michael Roberts <laughs> by accident. So he came out after and said, I just found out I accidentally called you Michael Roberts on the David Pakman episode. My apologies. It was completely accidental. And you even see back then, Kyle Klinsky, who uh, has been a guest on Rogan, trying to get Rogan to invite Brooks on as a guest. Of course, Rogan never did. And... Um, I think, uh, yeah, Michael Brooks just responds saying, no worries. So, man, I just wanted to share this, share those uh, those impressions, a little moment here, a little, you know, escape from the grim reality that uh, a lot of us are reading right now. And again, if you want to see more of those impressions, I will link to this full video below on YouTube. <laughs> 